In this video, I would love to take you through the learnings uh, that I have basically taken away from managing a WhatsApp community. I have managed a lot of communities on Slack and LinkedIn and Disco and Mighty Networks. Um, this is the first time I've launched uh, and managed a community on WhatsApp this year along with um, two other people. And so basically what I want to do is one, kind of just walk you through what it looks like with this video. I'm going to kind of annotate this video, kind of go through the key features so you understand how it works and the functionalities. And then I'm going to really share the kind of key lessons that I've learned because I feel like WhatsApp is kind of the wild west and there are some really amazing things about it and then some um, not so great things about it that's hard to get around. So obviously WhatsApp is a communication tech tool um, to have instant communication predominantly used on mobile. And what I really like about communities is that it's better than a WhatsApp group. Obviously a WhatsApp group is just one group, whereas a community you can have all these multiple sub channels and there's this announcement group in the WhatsApp that is then ring fenced and basically only admins can post in there, which is really beautiful. And so I love that element. You know, we kind of replicate in that in our Slack on the free plan. We have announcements that's just for our team. So you can do that in WhatsApp, which is cool. And you kind of have this major announcements channel and then all the subgroups to basically label them. I think fewer of the groups in WhatsApp is the better. WhatsApp is really good when you have a really intimate community who are friends and they really know each other because it's so it's so mobile, it's instant, it's really brief messaging. You're obviously not going to share a monologue um, there because you're texting on your phone. And so, you know, I think groups around interests or locations are really helpful. I've seen really great uh, WhatsApp communities that are based on probably two to key, two to three key locations, and then a couple um, interests uh, like negotiation or leadership or hiking, for example. And I see that as um, much more beneficial. And then obviously there's lots of different groups and then people can join um, different groups. And obviously you can share um, different types of formats. What works really well in WhatsApp are polls and voice notes. It's so great for that. It's really like listening on the go. I absolutely love that you can kind of attach a photo and it comes up as a graphic, but it's brevity. It's all about really, really, really short and sharp announcements. And then obviously you can kind of see here. Um, I also like that you can, you can obviously read um, how many messages people have read and understand those elements. But the thing with WhatsApp is there's very few analytics. So if you're managing a community for a business that needs to understand the analytics, the messaging open rates, we don't get any of that in WhatsApp backend. You just see if someone has opened your message or not, but not an analytics board. So that's in my experience what I've realized. Um, obviously, WhatsApp, I think the biggest the biggest downfall about WhatsApp is it's really hard to moderate um, and lines get pretty blurred because it's so social and intimate. So what I mean by that is everyone that joins can access every single member's phone number in the community. Whereas a good thing about Slack is everyone can join Slack, but no emails are shared with anyone else. You can't click a member profile and download their phone number or email on Slack. But WhatsApp, you can go to the announcements, you can see all the groups and you can see everyone's messages. And then if other people start DM people off the platform, you can't control that. So I wouldn't recommend WhatsApp communities for really high sensitive information. So if you're running like a legal tech community and you're sharing IP and you know, like little legal advice, which already sounds a bit confusing in a community, uh, you know, sharing people's phone numbers or, you know, maybe you manage like mental health groups and you're sharing vulnerable people's phone numbers, you know, it's, you can't hide that in WhatsApp. So that is, I find something really frustrating. And then people start DMing you as a manager. So I feel like because we manage a WhatsApp community now, members of our community will DM me on WhatsApp and I find those lines really blurred and I'll always reply being like, thanks so much for your message. Can you please email me if you ever want to talk about anything about the community? Because um, I don't I don't have that kind of offline element. And so obviously that's really hard to moderate. So I think a way around that is you have everyone who joins your WhatsApp community, signed your community guidelines, and then you reinforce them um, in that way. But obviously the good thing about that is you're on mobile. So it's an instant access. I think the stats for how many people, especially in Australia, start using WhatsApp now are through the roof. So one really cool thing about how I've seen people use communities is 
One, I've seen people use WhatsApp communities just as a, an announcements group to basically blast members. So what I mean by that is they create a WhatsApp community and they have an announcement channel and then they they have no other groups. They have no groups and no members can message each other whatsoever. And then the admin of this community is just posting like every Monday in WhatsApp, like some update that the community needs to know that week. So I've seen that work super cool. And, you know, I've also seen people just use it as advice channels and they're just putting, you know, the, the managers of the community or coaches are putting voice notes in the announcements channel and everyone can hear them, but no one can reply. And so what gets really beautiful about that is because WhatsApp can get so clouded. There's no threads. You can't really ring fence conversations. But what's really great about that is that you can just send massive announcements and updates to members. It's instant it's on their phone. They'll read it and then they might jump into a Slack or an or a group or something to kind of share more resources and have discussions. Um, I think WhatsApp is really good if the primary purpose of your community is to connect in person. People use their phone to go, yeah, I'm five minutes away. I'll see you there tomorrow night and then catch up in person. That's what I see work really well. I've seen a lot of great WhatsApp communities for co-working spaces. And then the main announcements channel is like Wi-Fi outage. Hey, there's lunch today. Like that is super awesome because everyone's on their phone. And then the groups are like for hiking and coffee and running and, you know, X, Y, Z. And then people are going off and using WhatsApp to organize to go hiking. So I think if the purpose of your community is to organize more in-person catch-ups and more live sync experiences, I think WhatsApp is really great for it. If your community is looking for a place to share resources, talk to each other, introduce themselves, I think WhatsApp's pretty awful for that. And I would use Slack um, or Discord or, you know, a more like on built on forum um, in that regard because WhatsApp is the Wild West. Um, also, every time you add a member, you have to add their phone number manually. And then every time you remove a member, you have to remove their um, mobile number. It comes up with a notification in WhatsApp in the announcements for everyone that you've removed. Remember that you've added a member. So there's a lot of notifications that you can't customize or delete. So things get really clogged really easily. Um, and then I guess the kind of best tactics that I've seen WhatsApp might have learned from what we run is that we create groups that last for a time bound element. They last for two weeks and then they close. So for example, we've been using WhatsApp to go, hey, we're all going to this conference. Let's be in this chat for five weeks. Let's talk about going to the conference. We go to the conference. We share all these photos. Where are you? Which session are you go to? I'm over here. Great. Oh, there's Venetia. Amazing. Take a photo of her. That's great. And then we share it. And then the group shuts down because otherwise the information overload is really intense. So that's probably my top tips and my lessons learned. Let me know if you have any other questions.